As you are diving deeper into Fusion V60, you're destined to battle the whole bodies versus components, assemblies, can you even link in parts? Well, today we're gonna straighten all that out and assure that you understand the whole parts, components, assemblies, so you can make your parts in greater happiness. Hello everybody, my name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. This channel is for people who hate struggling with their CAD and CAM software. So I really appreciate all your comments and feedback down in the comment area. If you like the video, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. If you don't, well, hit a thumbs down. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. Now, let's jump into today's topic. Bodies, components, assemblies, let's get it all figured out. A fusion part file is really a component. See that little white square block? That shows you a component. A component contains sketches, bodies, and its own origin. So when you go ahead and start a new sketch, and you start modeling up your part, when you, when you use the extrude command, it becomes a body. That body will always live within a component. Now components also have joints for movements. So this is important when you start assembling things together. It also have names and part numbers and descriptions. This is extremely important when you're trying to make build of materials for your drawings. Now bodies can't do any of that. Now, if Fusion is your first CAD package, you don't have to worry about this next part. So if you've ever used anything like Inventor or SolidWorks, you used to take an assembly and kind of like break it down part per part. So for example, these pliers. Ah. And the heater went on. So at this point, you will start drawing up each part individually in every part component kind of world. And then with your different drawn up components, the four different components, you will then go in in an assembly file and you will and you will then insert them into that assembly file. So the problem with this pair of pliers or wheel or whatever it is, is that it, this is a lot of files, right? Now, you, especially if you have a big assembly, you have a ton of parts. Problem number two is that all these parts are linked to the assembly, but can be a big hassle when you start moving things. What happens when you start moving things around is sometimes, Well, then your assembly can't find that part. So now your assembly cannot display that part and there's a big issue. Where is that part? You lose a reference. Two questions. Why can't we just do an assembly inside of just one component and not ending up with all these files? And second of all, that is strong enough so this thing just stays intact. I almost screwed the screw all the way through my hand. So to be able to do everything within one file, there's a couple of things we need to be able to do. We can take a body, remember, that always are inside of component, and we can turn that body into its own component. So now we actually end up with a component within a component, and that turns it into this assembly mode. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you will see if I go into the bodies and I right click on it, I now get an option called create components from bodies. When I click on that, I am now creating a component out of that body. What means that this component now has its own work offset and it has its own the bodies and sketches. 
Now also look up at the top that icon have now changed from a single component to kind of an assembly icon. Now I gotta give you a little bit of a warning though because we are capturing the history within Fusion 360, right? So every time you create a sketch, you extrude it out, then that will be remembered inside of the software. Now the problem is that we started out with a single component and we drew up that one part of these pliers and then we turned it into a new comp that body into a component. What that causes us to do is we have kind of a break in history. If you look at the screen, you will see that our, uh, our new component only has this new component icon, versus if we go up to the main assembly component, you will see the previous history. So it's not taking the history and convert it into the new component. That stays where it was. Many times when you know that you want to create assembly from the beginning, you're better off going in and actually create the component before uh, you start drawing things up and create bodies. That way all the history will be captured in the component from the beginning. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, so let me just delete this part here, kind of starting over from scratch. So if I know that this is going to be an assembly file, I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna right click on our top component here and I can create a new component. So now this new component will contain its own sketches and bodies and its own origins also. So let me go in here and start sketching inside of this new component. So we got one component created and to continue the assembly, we're just going to go in and create another component. Now the nice thing about this is that we can now use that first uh, component as a reference for our second component. Just a couple of things to address here. First of all, notice this little black dot next to each component. That is how you specify which component you want to be active. So you will see that when you activate a component, the other components becomes opaque or see-through. I also have to admit that I do realize that with my clearances and such with these pair of pliers, yeah, they wouldn't work in the real world. Now, another important thing that I just got to point out, and this I stumbled a little bit on this in the beginning, uh, is that even though that you activate a component, if you do any sorts of cut, as we're going to do here, some clearance cuts, uh, you will actually see that Fusion 360 will cut through everything it sees. Uh, not just the component that you have made active. So you will see that I'm gonna go in and activate component number one, but makes everything else opaque. And I'm gonna just create this little sketch to do some uh, clearance cuts. Uh, now I'm gonna cut through both sides of this. And now when I go out of it, if I go up to my top uh, component, you will see that the cut made it through both uh, components, but I don't want. Well, again, that is because Fusion will cut through anything it can see. So the trick is just to hide with a little light bulb the second component when you do the cut in the first component and then everything is as you, uh, as you would expect. Now, let's go ahead and do the same cut on component number two. So we will activate it, we will hide component one, and then we can go ahead and do our cut. So this is one of my favorite things. We are only using one file, but we have multiple components within this file. Now, many times when you're doing assemblies, you want some kind of a movement. Uh, and in this case, we're gonna use joints. Now, I did a video a few weeks ago on joints, so definitely check that one out. But one of the joints I did not call out in that one is the joint we're gonna use here. And that is called as built joint, what is very perfect for this scenario. So we have modeled up these plier handles the way that we really want them inside of an assembly. And now we can apply a as built joint uh, for these pliers. So let's go in and do that. So you're gonna go into the drop down. 
just where we found the other joints and you can click as built joints now this is pretty straightforward uh, you select the bodies that you want the joint to be applied to and then you can literally go over and select that joint origin now we'll get the movement um, and of course uh, we can also control the limits just like we did in the previous video so if you go back over to the joints folder you can right click and then you can set up limits so in this case I'm gonna make it zero and then you can add some kind of a degree uh, that these pliers can open up so we have our two components and we have added our as built joint uh, to get the movement of the pliers now we still have a couple of more of components to add in there the bolt and the nut um, and in this example I am actually gonna use reference models because yes sometimes you do want to have parts like screws or nuts or other things that you want to use uh, from the outside and bring into the assembly so you can definitely do that so if you go out to the data panel um, you can right click on the component that you want to insert into the current design and just hit insert into current design now when you do that then the part will be brought in and you can now use the joint command uh, just like we did in the video a few weeks ago and also notice here how I use the trick by holding down my control key so I can pick up that center point. Now we can do the same thing for the nut. Uh, go in, right click, insert into current design and we can also get that one uh, in place with the joint command. Now one thing to notice is that the components that we brought in to this design have a little chain link uh, next to them and that shows us that these components are actually referenced outside uh, our current design. What means that we cannot really modify these uh, bolts and nuts inside of here because they are referenced outside. You would actually have to go out to that individual component or slash part file and make any uh, design changes there. You do have the option to right click on a LinkedIn component and you can actually break the link if you want to and that way everything is kind of like contained within it. So I talked about earlier that many times when you have linked parts in the past things were kind of like lose references and suddenly kind of like your whole assembly will blow up. Well the way that we have secured that that don't happen inside of Fusion is well let me show you if we go out and we right click on the bolt what is really just a, uh, a single component and we say we want to copy it we can copy it to any project that we have available but if I go up and I try to do the same with our assembly file of the pliers you will see that I don't have an option to put it into any project that's because Fusion is aware of that the assembly of the pliers have linked in components the bolt and the nut but of course there is times where you want to take a full design and you want to reuse it in another project. So the way you do that is you go up here at the top in your data panel and you click up on the link that will take you out to your browser. Now out here in the upper right you can actually go out and you can save your whole assembly as a Fusion Archive file. This will let you bring this whole assembly down local on your machine. Then you can just navigate to the project where you want this assembly in and you can just upload it with the upload button right from the data panel. So I really hope that you found this video helpful. If I did a half a decent job, you have a little bit of handle on components, bodies and assemblies. As always, I love your comments and feedback down in the comments area. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. And also, don't forget to go and download your free CNC handbook right on CADCAMStuff.com. Just click uh, that link below and you should uh, get that PDF. So until the next time, I hope you have a super awesome day. I have a heater up there. Turn it off.